Good morning, brothers and sisters on the spiritual path. I'm glad we're all coming together this morning. <clears throat> I'm going to, well, morning here, it could be afternoon, evening or night, wherever you are. But we're all coming together at this moment as brothers and sisters on the spiritual path, coming together in peace, love and harmony. But if we can't come together in peace, love and harmony, what hope is for the is for the world? You're all brothers and sisters on this often thorny path to enlightenment. Everyone's on a thorny path to enlightenment, but different stages. So we should help our brothers and sisters bring a little bit of light into this world. It's so needed at the moment, so very much needed. So I want to start with a little, with a little um, meditation. This is from the Bhagavad Gita. Just a few verses. And just relax, just breathe with any tension, just live in this moment. That's all that matters. Forget everything that went before. All that matters now is this moment, this beautiful, shining moment. There's nothing else exists but this moment. Just relax. Never the spirit was born. The spirit shall cease to be never. Never was time it was not. End and beginning are dreams. Birthless and deathless and changeless remaineth the spirit forever. Death hath not touched it at all, dead though the house of it seems. Nay, but as when one layeth his worn out robes away and taketh new ones, saith, These will I wear today. So putteth by the Spirit lightly its garb of flesh, and passeth to inherit a residence afresh. I say to thee, weapons reach not the life, flames burn it not, waters cannot overwhelm, nor dry winds wither it. Impenetrable, unentered, unassailed, unharmed, untouched, immortal, all arriving, stable, sure. Invisible, ineffable, by word and thought, uncompassed, ever all itself. Thus is the soul declared. How wilt thou then, knowing it so, grieve when thou shouldst not grieve? So, brothers and sisters, once again we approach the quiet time of the year, autumn, which is conducive to meditation and reflection. It's times that we, that like this, that we took advantage of the softening light of day and the tender blueness of the sky. Time to merge into the sweetness of the air and the beautiful melancholy of this season and to contemplate deeply the human condition. We need not go very deep to realise that man's inhumanity to man is as bad, if not worse, than ever. Terrorist attacks, stabbings, etc. The, the terrible things have gone on recently in this country and elsewhere <clears throat> are proof of this. And almost daily some horrible story of cruelty and murder appears in the news. All this is proof that theosophy and spirituality are needed more than ever in this world. Hearts are needed that are vowed to the welfare of humanity. This is what the masters wanted when the Theosophical Society was started. A hard task amongst the intellectual Victoria classes of the time. Even the teachings had to be clothed in their language and precious few understood the motive behind the founding of the Theosophical Society. Perhaps if more hard, the world would not be as bad as it is now. 
too much time was spent wallowing in intellectual concepts that mean nothing in the final analysis, unless they are channeled into constructive work for humanity. If not, then all our religions and philosophical systems will not make man any better, but in many cases, much worse. As Islamic and Christian extremists have proved in the past and are proving now. Yes, it is very sad that we lose sight of the beauty and the dignity of our fellow creatures and glory in the mastery of spiritual ideas that make us not the slightest bit more spiritual, but just add to the storehouse of lower mind images that in the end will block out the light. Motivation is everything. It is important to discover a brotherhood of light, of souls, of light. Right under our very noses, not in some fairy tale future or some pseudo mystical state of being. It is more of a reality than our very own breath and even nearer. Alas, that all of us possess this potential but do not make use of it. Do not cultivate the human side of our being. Do not relate to each other in ways that are inspirational. How we cultivate isolation and become insular. The cocoon of the individual, the family, the state, shutting out others, promoting violence, despair and loneliness. The myth of the comfort zone, of protecting one's own space. These are important in certain situations, of course, but can become chains when made into hard and fast dogmas. We are bound only by the habit of meditation. When we lose spontaneity and fall into well-worn grooves of thoughts and action, we become puppets, mannequins, and lose our humanity by degrees. We need to get back to a oneness with nature. In this society, practices that are not in line with nature's plan are accepted and given a false respectability, and therefore eat away at the very fabric of civilization, leading us closer to the, to the degeneration that brought about Atlantis' downfall. Therefore, it matters to look with different eyes, even our vision of seven levels, look at others with renewed optimism, seeing beyond the persona, the mass, to the being that lives, moves, and has its existence in eternity. And don't forget to look with love, for that is our only weapon in the fight against the dark forces that threaten to engulf us all. The world is, the world is ultimately beautiful. Just look around you at the meadows, the hills, the sky, the sun and rain, heat, haze and frost. Look at all the creatures in this world striving to find happiness. All our fellow humans sinning more often through ignorance and mistaken loyalties than purposeful malice or evil. Loyalty to some person or some man-made God that leads them well away from truth. Therefore learn to see beneath the surface and to love what lies deep in the mystical heart of humanity. It is valuable to send out optimistic thoughts and positive uplifting vibrations and to inject a lot of love into the situation. But events have a habit of awakening in us something that has been dormant for a while. Therefore, we can use these words to challenge us to have a, a vision of the future, which is far from being dark and forbidding, as the media would have us believe. Even films at the cinema portray a dystopian civilization in years to come. So no wonder many people are becoming depressed and anxious. As theosophists and anyone on a true spiritual path, we should be able to see the future in a different light. Because in our thoughts and actions, we make that future. And these words from H. P. Blavatsky should offer us some encouragement. I say it again, it is only theosophy, well, underst well understood, that can save the world from despair by reproducing social and religious reform 
a task once before accomplished in history by Gautama, the Buddha, a peaceful reform without one drop of blood spilt, each one remaining in the faith of his fathers, if he or she so chooses. To do this, he will only have to reject the parasitic plants of human fabrication, which at the present moment are choking all religions and churches in the world. Let him accept but the essence, which is the same in all, that is to say the spirit, which gives life to man, in whom it resides, and renders him immortal. Let every man inclined to incline go on to find his ideal, a star before him, to guide him. Let him follow it without ever deviating from the truth and from his path. And he's almost certain to reach the beacon light of life, the truth, no matter whether he seeks for and finds it at the bottom of a cradle or of a well. Now, I've used that quote a few times in talks, but it's a very inspiring one. A peaceful reform, she says, without one drop of blood spilt. That's very important. Certainly we need to inject a little positiveness into a generally negative world and help on those on all levels by working for a better future. Optimism is something we should have, despite what we are subjected to in our daily lives as a result of a materialistic view of what it is to be human. When trying to live a spiritual life in a world that is based upon material ideas and concepts, it's a bit like the video I saw recently about salmon swimming upstream and not just having to fight against the flow of the, the, the river and the water, but also negotiating waterfalls and hungry birds. What gets them through is sheer determination. Not all of them make it, of course, but it is not for lack of effort on their part. To live this spiritual life, it is necessary to go against the flow, because our teachings tell us that the way the world is, is not the way the world should be. As a result of this, many aspirants give in and begin to live a false life, going along with the rules and regulations of society that are the exact opposite of what the inner self tells them to do. Therefore, we have to follow the dictates of our higher self. In the key to theosophy, H. P. Blavatsky states that the duty of a theosophist is to control and conquer through the higher, the lower self, to purify himself inwardly and morally, and to fear no one and naught save the tribunal of his own conscience. Never to do a thing by halves, i.e., if he thinks it the right thing to do, let him do it openly and boldly. And if wrong, never touch it at all. It is the duty of a theosophist to lighten his burden by thinking of the wise aphorism of Epictetus, who says, Be not diverted from your duty by any idle reflection the silly world may make upon you. For the censures are not in your power, and consequently should not be any part of your concern. So how many of us have read this many times, and I've said it quite a few times in talks again, but I've not, I've not the courage to put it into action. Like so many things that we read, we just gloss over them and give them just what's known as lip service. Of course, no one is forced to live such a theosophical life, and if one is content just to study the teachings on an intellectual level, then hopefully that will be preparation for the next life. But for those who wish to give some consolation and hope to others in difficult times, then there is always invaluable practice and practical advice to be followed. How are we to reach this elevated status? Once again, in the, in the Key to Theosophy by H.P. Blavatsky, she says, by the enlightened application of our precepts to practice, by the use of our higher reason, spiritual intuition and moral sense, and by following the dictates of what we call the still small voice 
of our conscience, which is that of our ego, and which speaks louder in us than the earthquakes and the thunders of Jehovah, wherein the Lord is not. So I wish you all peace, love and harmony in this crazy world. Um, and I think that people on the spiritual path are needed more now than ever in these dark times. And never to despair, never to despair of humanity. Always to keep the spiritual light in, in our hearts and try to give it to others, try to share it and give it to others. Be peaceful, tranquil, calm. And it's not always easy, of course. But we can only try. The Masters once said, try. And that's very important. So, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. Peace on earth and goodwill to all beings. Namaste. The divine in me greets the divine in you. A few moments silence and then I'll sign off. <laughs>